Hey guys, Kim here from Kim on a Whim, and I'm going to just jump straight into today's video. I've said it before and I will say it again, nothing will motivate you more to get your house clean than people coming over to your house. So I'm going to do a deep clean of the bathroom. I'm going to start with getting the shower curtains down. The shower curtain, we have a liner, like a cloth liner. I can't stand like those plastic ones against my skin when I'm in the shower. They're just always so cold. But I'm going to start here with the cloth liner that we have on the inside and I'm just going to do a little bit of hot water and bleach just so I can get that like nasty yellow staining that's at the bottom off of this. So we're going to start there. We're going to do a load of whites. Let this sit for just a few minutes while I go collect the other stuff that would go in with the whites and the bleach. Okay, so now that I have everything in the washer, I'm just gonna take this and dump it right into the washer. It already has the bleach in it. I put a little OxyClean in the bottom. So that's all set to go. So while that's getting done, I'm gonna move on to the kitchen and just get all of my dishes done. So as I was saying in the beginning, nothing motivates you more to get your house in order than when people are coming over to your house. And kind of with the holidays being over, you kind of just slip into a routine of, oh yeah, I'll get that when I get it. Whereas, you know, people coming over, you're like, all right, you know, I got to get the fingerprints off of here and I want to make sure that, you know, the coffee that dripped on the cabinet gets cleaned up and just kind of going through and spot cleaning a lot of stuff. And like I was saying, there was such a span between when we would get together. Like for instance, we got together for Christmas and we wouldn't get together again until Easter in April. And that's like a good four month span. And it's not that we all live so far from each other. It's just, you know, you kind of get busy with the day to day in and out, getting stuff done, life. Life is always happening. So what I figured is, let's try to get together a little more often. And I figured do something easy, um, like even maybe like just a pizza night, I think I'm gonna try and do one night. But this time we decided to do a dip party and everybody just bring a dip. We provided the, you know, like a kind of main course meal that was all just a pick food kind of thing. And I'll insert some pictures of what we did we did a shrimp boil and that was really good because it was real easy cleanup when I say super easy like we just put down I got a Dollar Tree um, tablecloth I put that down then I just put newspaper on top of that and the shrimp boil pretty much came out of the oven and right onto the newspaper when everybody was done eating literally rolled up everything and put it into a trash bag so super easy cleanup as far as that was concerned and then the dip party was just bring a dip whatever you want to have like that's what you bring so for instance we made a mushroom dip I did a spinach dip and then Mia made a BLT dip and then her and her boyfriend made a buffalo chicken dip. My sister-in-law brought a, um, she brought wings that we dipped into ranch or blue cheese. And my mother-in-law brought some pretzels that we dipped into mustard. Unfortunately, my other sister-in-law couldn't make it. She was going to bring a chocolate dip, but one of her, one of her little guys were sick and we wanted to make sure, like we've been trying so hard to make sure nobody gets sick in the house because Mia has clinicals right now and she cannot miss a clinical. They are like so strict as far as what you can miss for clinicals especially. So we are trying our best to make sure like we're hand sanitizing. I'm still masking up going into stores. She'll mask up like just to try and make sure that we can get through 
this semester with no illness so that she doesn't have to take a day off of her clinicals. She's got two clinicals back to back right now. And if you miss a clinical, like to the point where you have to drop the course and then you have to take the semester all over again, which really stinks. I mean, especially like in this time right now where you have the cold going around, flu going around, stomach bug, like there's so much stuff going around that could make you not be able to go to clinical because, you know, she's going into hospitals dealing with sick people. The last thing she can do is bring a sickness in with her. So we've been just trying to be really careful because I see all over how people are just getting sick and then like back to back sick too. So fingers crossed, please, everybody fingers crossed that we'll stay healthy and Mia won't have to miss any clinicals. But like I said, we're doing the dishes. I'm going to finish up on the dishes and then I'm going to take you back into the bathroom because I have my rust spot again. And I'm going to work with the pink stuff. I'm going to work with the scrub daddy paste. And then I'm also going to work with my tried and true barkeeper's friend. So let's see which one takes care of this rusting in the bathtub. One tip I will say is when you use bleach, I always like to do the next load of laundry as towels just in case there is any kind of residue of that bleach left over. I can make sure it's not going to get on our clothes. But now we're going into the bathroom to work on that rust stain. Okay, so here's the rust stain. I get this every few weeks. Um, I think it's just that the, the tub isn't kind of leveled properly so that the water completely drains and it just sits here. And it's been a long time since we've redone this bathroom, um, probably 22 years or more. So I think we're in the market for a new tub and do a tile surround and stuff, but that'll come at a later date. But right now I'm going to use on one side of it, the scrub daddy paste, and then on the other side of it, I'm gonna use the pink stuff. And then I'm just gonna let this sit for a little bit, cause that's usually what I will do. And while that's sitting, I'm gonna work on the rest of the bathroom and get everything put away, cleaned up, try and get stuff a little bit more organized and get everything nice and like deep cleaned. Like we're going to be wiping down the walls cause I don't know about you guys, but we always have toothpaste on the wall behind the faucet here. I, I don't know. I, I thought, honestly, like as the kids got older, it wouldn't be. And I shouldn't just blame them because I'm sure it's us too. But yeah, so we're just going to get everything put away and everything looking nice and neat and a deep, deep clean.
Okay, so now I'm gonna switch back because this has probably been sitting here now for about 15, 20 minutes. The one that I'm scrubbing right now was the Scrub Daddy Paste. The one that I'm using with the pink sponge is the pink stuff. And I'd have to say, cause I've used the Scrub Daddy Paste on this before and it didn't really work out for me for this particular, like this rust spot here. I, I know it always happens. So I have found that the Barkeeper's Friend is the one that wound up working on this. Um, you can see where the pink stuff did make it a little bit better than the Scrub Daddy did. But when at the end of the day, it's the Barkeeper's Friend that really got all of the rust spots out of this. Now there is still going to be a mark just from the tub being old and worn out, but at least the rust part of it will be gone. And then this is just a scotch Bright scrubber. This is so that I can try and save my back when I'm scrubbing the tub and the shower surround because this is like such an awkward space as far as trying to get into scrubbing everything. So I grabbed this at like Walmart or something. I'll see if I can find something and link it below, but it works pretty good. Um, you still have to put a lot of elbow grease into it. I know somebody was suggesting for me to get the attachment for the drill, the little scrub brush that you attach to the drill. And I might look into that cause it is a workout. Like it will give the arms a good workout, but as you see the, the barkeeper's friend did the best. So this is actually the next day now. And I just wanted to squirt everything down with bleach. I knew I was going to be using bleach in the bathroom for most of the time. So I did grab these Barillo. Um, they're kind of like a reusable rag from the Dollar Tree. You get like nine in a pack. And I knew because I was going to be using the bleach, I wanted to use something instead of paper towels. So I'm just not, you know, going through a whole roll of paper towels, just cleaning the bathroom. These things worked awesome because you can just rinse them out, reuse them. Since it was in the bathroom, I only used it the one time and tossed it. But I know you can use it for dishes if you just want to clean up the countertops and not always use a... Um, paper towels like going through paper towels like crazy but if you're at the Dollar Tree and you happen to see them they're really cool now I'm just going to go through with the mop and get everything cleaned above kind of above my shoulders because I I can't reach anything over the tubs around here so I'm just going to go through and put even new hooks I did get new hooks finally for my shower curtain because it was, um, yeah, they were bad. They were really rusty. They weren't sliding along the shower rod there. So we just needed to invest in some new ones. It's, it's been a while, so they're working much better now. Okay, so we got shower curtain washed and up. Now we're just gonna put our towels back. The towels that nobody's allowed to use. I just wash them because, you know, they get a little dusty after a while, but nobody uses the towels. As a matter of fact, I did see one moved the other day and I'm like, huh, who would have used this towel? But isn't it silly? We put towels up and nobody's allowed to use them. Just gonna put this little, um, wooden piece that I have back up and of course I couldn't find where everything lined up again but we were able to get it up there and I'm also going to just keep continuing to work around the top of the walls just to get anything that might be in the corners and then you know because of the shower the streaks that you know kind of form up there from just the, all the hot water being constantly 
Like, it's like a sauna sometimes when you walk in this bathroom. We have the fan, and the fan's always running, but it's just, yeah, the hot water. We tend to like our hot water, which is why we have so many lotions and potions, because our skin's so dry. But I'm also going to work on the bottom of the sink here and just try to get everything a little more organized. There's not much in here. Like a few of the stuff that's in here that we don't really need here, I kind of just got put in here to get off of a shelf or a countertop. But we're going to go through that and get this all cleaned out, reorganized, and restocked. I'm just doing a check of my pipe here because I don't know if you guys saw in the last video, the pipe completely rotted out. My husband had to replace the whole pipe underneath the kitchen sink because we noticed that there was, at first we noticed there was a little bit of water. We thought it was just the water from splashing, doing the dishes, it went behind or something. But then there was a puddle as I was decluttering all of the cabinets in the kitchen. And when I got to the one under the sink, we realized, or I realized that there was a puddle there. And I was like, oh man. So when Greg got home that night, he looked at it and he just needed to replace the whole, the whole pipe system that came from the sink down into the drain. So he fixed that. I am actually going to go through because I did get something from Walmart recently so that I can try and get that a little better organized, but yeah, so let's finish this up and then we're going to continue on walls and cleaning. So here's one of the spots I was talking about, like, oh yeah, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. Our intake for our heating and air conditioning is right above here. And for some reason, this doorway to the kitchen and then the one to the bathroom gets so dusty. I don't know if it's just from like just the, the vent pulling all of the air in and the dust kind of attracts right here. But it's one of those spots where as I was brushing my teeth, I'm like, oh yeah, you know what? I gotta remember to dust around that door frame. Or when I would walk through here, I'm like, oh yeah, I gotta remember to dust around here. Well, I'm finally remembering <laughs> to dust around here and get all of the dust that's right where this vent is. I figured that while I'm wiping down the walls in the hall that I'll also go through and do a nice deep clean of the doors. And I guess like this could almost be my jump start to spring cleaning in a way because this is usually what I would do come springtime. I would go around and get everything in the corner, make sure there's no cobwebs or anything up in the corners and just any kind of fingerprints or anything that are on the doors and the walls just from walking through. So yeah, I guess this could be a little bit of a jump start on spring cleaning and even maybe a little bit of an undecorate. <laughs> That's the only decorations I had up for Valentine's Day. I just put little hearts on our bedroom doors and that was it because I really, I don't have the room to store the decorations. So I do bare, bare minimum for any of the other holidays as far as decorations. 
I said before, like I stick with my Halloween decorations. We go all out Halloween, we go all out Christmas. So that's the ones that I make sure I have all of my decorations and I have room for just those. So anything extra has to be really small and very minimal. And that, that was probably as bad as minimal as you could get. So now it's later on in the night. Uh, we've had dinner, cleaned up from dinner, and now I'm just going to come in here into the family room and just kind of straighten everything up, but still do a deep cleaning because I still want to get everything that might be in the corners and on the walls here and kind of just get everything put where it belongs. Like this is kind of a daily thing that I do with fluffing up pillows, putting pillows where they belong. However, I will say it was a hot minute for my dusting. I was I was kind of surprised at how much dust was on my end tables, but we're taking care of that now. So I'm getting everything vacuumed up, dusted. That way tomorrow, really all I need to do is my wet, dry vac thingy. I never know what this thing is called. It's the Tin Koto. I know you guys have seen it all over on YouTube here. It's the, the mop that vacuums, that dries everything real quick. I, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> But anyway, and I don't know why I did this so backwards. So I dusted everything and vacuumed, but then realized that I still wanted to wipe down the walls. For some reason, forgot that. I should have done that first. I should have wiped down the walls, then dust it, then vacuum. That would have made sense to do it that way, right? But I don't know if you guys are here and if you've been here, you know, I kind of do things backwards for some reason. Like I don't really plan these things out very well I just kind of wing it that's why it's Kim on a whim because I just wing everything pretty much like no list no rhyme or reason just winging it here but eh, oh well it gets done that's what's important it's not Pinterest perfect but it is done and that's what we need we need to just be done so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this with the notification bells so you'll see when I do upload videos. And I hope you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys!